What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Did the Rock Challenge Triple H? AEW wrestlers are frustrated. Prayers for former WCW star and other wrestling related news. Hey man, I'm definitely interested to see what's going on with this whole Rock and Triple H situation. That's another storyline that's kind of been added to the overall storyline of Rock, Roman, and Cody. Like, I'm, I'm very interested. I'm, I'm filming this right before Friday Night SmackDown is actually led on tonight. So I'm looking forward to the live stream reaction because The Rock and Roman Reigns are supposed to be there on SmackDown tonight. Very interested to see how things are going to play out, what they have to say to um, Triple H um, from his his response from last week. Things are heating up. I cannot wait for WrestleMania. I'm so excited. I'm even excited for Elimination Chamber just to see where things go and what storylines end up being progressed. So we're going to check this out by WrestleMania. Appreciate all love sport. Let's get right into this one, man. What is going on guys? It is WrestleMania here, 20% more nasally than usual. Sorry guys, I've been fighting a cold for the last four days, <laughs> and I'm trying my best. Join us it's now. It's all good, the man. New stories and rumors you need to know, including... Wishing you a speedy recovery, my boy. I, I definitely understand about trying to fight a cold and stuff. The Rock confirms night one of WrestleMania 40. Oh. Did WWE tease The Rock versus Triple H? More McMahon allegations? AEW talent frustrated over Tony Khan's denial. Rey Mysterio returning soon. Prayers mm. out to a former WCW star. Does Sammy Guevara have legitimate heat? And much more. Be All sure right. to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. All right. Look like there's some interesting wrestling news. Let's get into this one, man. Now, first story looks at The Rock confirming night one of WrestleMania 40. Mm. Atop of today's news is a report outlining the timeline for The Rock's heel turn and why the WWE decided to change The Rock vs. Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40 to Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns. Dave Meltzer is reporting in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter that The Rock called for his character to go heel. This mm. happened after the negative reaction to Cody handing his WrestleMania 40 spot to The Rock. According to Meltzer, The Rock didn't want to be booed as a babyface, instead yeah. changing gears with the storyline's direction. Very quickly, Johnson changed his pitch and wanted to go heel, and WWE just as quickly put into motion, pushing the publicity that had been started in subtle ways, such as Logan Paul endorsing it. It was clearly mm. an angle WWE was going with by the next day. The open of Raw two days later, where the announcers openly talked about Rhodes finishing the story, cameras immediately focused on the road sign, showing that to be the case. According to Meltzer, there are still details Makes that haven't sense. come out concerning the change of plans. There is said to be far more behind the scenes that hasn't come out, but given the timing, can't be talked about now. But Johnson over the weekend said it was best to be out of the Reigns match, putting Cody in, which by this point everyone conceded by then. It was then Johnson who pitched the heel turn, and he did pitch the idea for the Reigns and Rock versus Rhodes and Rollins match for night one. Whoa. So that was his idea, if that is how it turns out. Oh, the WWE shit. deserves credit for taking a bad situation, its decision to book the Rock versus Roman rather than Cody versus Roman, and changing things up to a spectacular storyline. The WWE Universe is now invested in seeing things play out, not only between Cody and The Rock, but as we'll see next, between The Rock and Triple H. So oh, boy. Well, yesterday I did a video talking about I would like to see Bailey and EO main event. If if the rumors are true and they're trying to do this tag match between Seth and Cody versus Rock and Roman, well, yeah, that, mm -mm, that main event is done. WrestleMania this year, night one and two, will involve The Rock in both instances. And it, it kind of does align with Seth Rollins' promo on Monday Night Raw. He's like, let me, I can be your shield if you need me to. Like, he wants to align himself with Cody because he knows he's going to need the help. This is going to be very interesting. Because how do you book this? How do you book this? Because there's no way... I don't know. I don't I don't I don't I don't see unless you have Seth eat the pin, but that wouldn't make much of sense. And I don't see the rock eating the pin. And I don't see Roman eating the pin. So how do you I don't know if that's I don't know how you book this. I don't know how you book yourself out of this and then go into night two to have Cody versus Roman. 
I don't know. That's that's probably the most confusing part. How do you book this? What makes sense? Do you have Seth eat the pin and the baby faces loses, lose? Or do you have Roman eat the pin, which I doubt it? Or do you have The Rock eat the pin, which I doubt it? Do you have Cody eat the pin, which I doubt it? The only person that could viably eat the pin would be Seth. And even then, you don't want to do that to him. So I don't know. I don't know. But we do have to talk about what he talked about, um, them changing plans. It was an audible. It, what they said definitely sounds like an audible. They pitched gears because they saw it wasn't going to work. And kudos to WWE. Kudos to uh, The Rock. Kudos to everybody that said, you know what? Let's switch gears. Let's play into it. That's what wrestling is about. That's what it's always been about. Playing into what the fans are reacting to. And it worked. Cody's the biggest star he's ever been in WWE. Now we have a potential bigger storyline with The Rock and Roman on the same side. We got Triple H in the mix. We got Seth Rollins in the mix. It's like WWE versus the bloodline, essentially. And I'm here for it. It worked. Fantastic. WWE definitely, hopefully in the future, pull more audibles when when they when they make sense. So did the WWE tease Rock versus Triple H? Another interesting segment occurred after the press conference that led to speculation about the Rock vs. Triple H match. Mm -hmm. Dave Meltzer commented on this and why some fans thought it might be a setup for the Rock vs. Hunter. At the Mania press conference on 8th February in Las Vegas, Levesque talked about guys going into business for themselves with the idea The Rock was going against a planned script. Later, they filmed a segment which didn't air on television, but it was all over social media, where Levesque and The Rock went nose to nose and actually challenged each other for a match at Mania. Oh. Given Levesque's heart issues, such a match would seem to be impossible, and virtually everyone believed that to be the case. Yeah. Now we're unsure as to what segment that was posted on social media made it clear that these two were going to have a match. Is Meltzer getting confused by the 2014 showdown between The Rock yeah. and Triple H? To my knowledge, this segment doesn't even exist. Yeah. And even so, the match can't even happen unless Triple H has a medical miracle. Yeah. Also observed the angle was designed to build the underlying story of a tug of war between TK Holdings board member The Rock and WWE Chief Content yeah. Officer Triple H. The fact it was never put on television says it was not something they wanted to hammer home as a storyline and more was a way to make people think that the two were getting along with the idea the aspect of the angle was real. Whatever the case, the storyline is working to perfection and fans mm -hmm. will be tuning into tonight's SmackDown to see what The Rock and Roman Reigns have to say about the fallout from the press conference. And this is great. This is great for the fans. Uh, uh, this, is, this works. This is perfect. They're doing... They're, they're, this is the most hype I've been for WrestleMania. Last year, I was pretty hyped to see how things play out. This year, I, bro, I am... I'm all for it. I'm ready for WrestleMania to start because we actually have some good storylines going into the show and when the card's not even done yet. The card's not even fully built out yet. So, ah man, this is SmackDown is a must watch. SmackDown is a must watch. Friends, next up more McMahon allegations. Did Vince McMahon fire a female wrestler for turning down his advances? Well, former mm. WWE superstar Rene Dupree had this to say during an episode of his Café de Rene podcast. You remember when we had Charlie Haas on here and he told a story about how Johnny Ace, Laurinaitis fired him and Jackie the day they got back from their honeymoon? Well, let's just say Vince also made a pass at Jackie, which she declined. Oh. And you see what happened once her and Charlie got married. If you listen to this story, it seems like if you don't put Vince over and you don't boost his ego, he gets mad at you and takes it out on your career. Janelle Grant's lawsuit against Vince McMahon could open a Pandora's box of other allegations. The recent release of a statement mm -hmm. made by former WWE superstar Ashley Mazzaro shortly before her 2019 passing alleged that McMahon sexually preyed on female wrestlers mm -hmm. and that McMahon sabotaged her career after she rejected his advances. Former ECW valet Francine, who also worked in WWE during the company's revival of ECW, discussed her experiences in the WWE. This week's Observer summarized some of her comments. In talking about her time in WWE, she said that McMahon never did anything unprofessional with her and did continually question Janelle Grant for not leaving the situation she was in. She said that at one point when she was frustrated by a lack of push, somebody, and she'd never mentioned the name, told her to put oil on her breast and wear a low-cut top, go into McMahon's office and bend over in front of him as advice. She said she never did it. With McMahon reportedly mm. being investigated by the authorities and attorneys ready to represent anyone who has a claim against McMahon, this story is likely just the beginning. Next up. Oh, yeah, nah. It, 
she about to be, yeah, not she, but Vince, he, yeah, the, the, the floodgates have opened up. The floodgates have opened up. Hell, I, I think I had seen something on Twitter um, involving Stephanie McMahon and knowing some of the stuff that happened with Ashley. Um, not sure how true it is, but it's not looking good for the McMahons right now. So, yeah, as soon as that happened with Janelle and the, the lawsuit, oh, and once they let him go, uh, TKO Holdings, oh, yeah, you knew. People are about to start coming out the woodworks and telling their truths. Whether it's true or not, it, now it's just to pile up and to bury him. That's literally what it is. AEW talent frustrated over Tony Khan's denial. AEW president Tony Khan has been talking about the promotion's success in revenues and ratings, but is Khan fooling himself? Dave Meltzer addressed the situation in the latest Observer noting at least some talents see things differently. There's also frustration from a lot of circles since talent comes to the shows and sees the smaller crowd since the start of the year. Mm. Khan always paints a positive picture about the company being stronger due to the increased revenues or bringing up ratings. And there's a feeling that popularity is declining overall and changes have to be made to turn it around and he's acting like everything is fine. Mm. Hopefully AEW can negotiate a better rights deal and once that is done, focus on addressing the promotion's problems including a weak women's division, too much talent and poor ticket sales. Next up, when does Drew's double- Yeah, and, and that's also a, a very big thing. Um, I don't know. I, I, really, I really don't know how you can fix it, to be honest with you. Um, they do have the right world champion in Samoa Joe. I love what they got going on there. I'm actually looking forward to Samoa Joe, uh, Adam Page, and uh, Swerve, um, the triple threat match. I'm looking forward to that. Um, at the next pay per view event they're gonna have, looking forward to that match. It's like the really that and the Sting's last match, the tag team match, I believe he's having with Darby. And the Young Bucks, I'm looking forward to that, obviously, because it's Sting's last match. Those are the really only two matches I really, me personally, actually care about. Because <laughs> Samoa Joe, that's one thing Tony Khan did get right, putting the championship, the world championship, AEW championship, on Samoa Joe. The dude deserves it. He's one of the best things about the damn show, in my personal opinion. So, I'm going to just leave that there. <laughs> WWE deal end. When is Drew McIntyre's current WWE deal expiring? While it's known that the Scottish Warriors' current deal ends sometime this year, there have been conflicting reports about just when. Some reports have stated that it could be gone before WrestleMania, but not according to Fightful Select, which is reporting. Fightful Select has confirmed that McIntyre's deal now extends past WrestleMania, and that some injury and inactivity time was added to the deal in order to get it there. As we noted yesterday, it's believed that both Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre have yet to sign a new deal with the WWE. Mm. Whether they sign a new deal, the WWE can rest assured that both will be available for the showcase of the Immortals. However, in Seth's case, this will depend on whether he can work through his current MCL and meniscus tear. Next up, Tommy yeah, Dream. Yeah, man. If I'm WWE, honestly, I put the title on Drew. I was thinking Gunther at first, but they may be going a different route with him. Maybe Braun Breaker. But I put the title on Drew. He's He's been killing it. He's literally, now he's become the best part of Monday Night Raw. He's become the best part of WWE. The way he's using his social media presence is fantastic. This is honestly one of the best versions of Drew I've seen in WWE. He's fantastic as a heel, as a prick. He's entertaining. Killing it on the promos. The stuff he's saying are truth bombs. He's just an asshole about it. It's, put the championship on him. I don't think anyone would trip. I don't think anyone would get mad. Seth Rollins, he's done what he can do. He's literally wrestled his body to the brink. Put the title on him. Have Drew run Monday Night Raw for a little bit. Have him get that moment. Because I'm telling you this now. Drew's going to get a pop. A WrestleMania moment that he deserves. He's going to get the pop that he deserves. Finally. I don't think anyone would trip. That's just my, my personal opinion. I don't think anybody would trip. Put the championship on Drew. Have him extend his contract. The guy's been, he's been putting in the work. He has the number one selling t-shirt. The guy's. 
He's him. <laughs> Dreamer running TNA Creative. There's more news emerging on TNA Wrestling following the shocking departure of longtime president Scott Demore. Meltzer is reporting that Tommy Dreamer is now the head of creative in TNA. Oh, wow. And TNA Wrestling's parent company released Demore, leading to major backstage heat on management. Many TNA wrestlers are upset with Demore's ouster, and at one point, there were rumors that wrestlers were told they could ask for their release. Jeff Jarrett, who was involved with the promotion for many years, including its formation, recently commented on the situation. I know him, Anthony Sassoni, the person taking Demore's spot. I worked with him back then, and I think he will tell you he is not a wrestling guy by any stretch of the imagination. He can be an executive, and he is, but I'm thinking at the core, who is the wrestling guy? At the end of the day, that is an enormous component of who is steering the ship creatively. Hopefully, Dreamer can handle the creative end, while Sony handles man. the business end of things. As fans have seen with Nick Khan, a strong executive can help grow business, while someone else handles the creative end of things. Especially Next up, someone, Ray returning. especially someone that's been in the wrestling business, kind of understand it. It's better for them to kind of run the creative because they know they they they've been out there. They understand it rather than someone that's better with more of the business side of things. You know, so. Congrats to uh, Tommy Dreamer, man. That's awesome to be in that uh, situation for TNA. Soon, There's good news for Rey Mysterio fans as Meltz is reporting that Rey Mysterio's return now looks to be in a few weeks. Awesome. He was hoping for late January, but is pretty close to being ready to return. Awesome. Rey's return can come at a better time yes. with WrestleMania 40 fast Ooh, approaching. It'll be interesting be to see if the WWE goes with the rumored Dominic vs. Rey rematch at WrestleMania or continues the Master of the 619's feud with Santos Escobar. Continue Next with up, Santos. Out to former WCW star. A football legend and former Four Horsemen member, Steve Mongo McMichael, has been reportedly been hospitalized. Mongo has been courageously battling ALS, was oh, recently damn. taken to hospital. According to Wrestling News, a former NFL star Walter Payton's son, Jared, wrote on social media that McMichael is headed to the emergency room with suspected pneumonia. He tweeted, oh, We're asking for prayers for Steve McMichael. He's going to the emergency room now with suspected pneumonia. We'll inform you as we have more updates. Thank you, the McMichael family, Team Mongo. Longtime fans will remember Steve McMichael provided color commentary on Nitro before becoming a member of the Four Horsemen. Mongo, who played for the Chicago Bears, including winning a Super Bowl, is now being inducted into this year's class of the NFL Hall of Fame. Wow. We send our thoughts and prayers to Mongo and his friends, family, and fans. Yeah, no, nah, definitely sending prayers and uh, love to his family and friends. I was, I've was i seen that on Twitter. I, I wasn't sure who that person was, so now I have be a better context about it. Once again, sending prayers and love to the family, uh, to his family, man, uh, you know, and it's a tough one. You know, that's why I always say, and me and Dub always say, cherish your life, enjoy it while you can, while you're here, make the best of it, man. And uh, wishing him nothing but hopefully a speedy recovery. Next up, legit heat on Sammy Guevara. Mm. Is there a legit heat between Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara? Well, fans are asking this after seeing a video of Matt flipping off Guevara after Sammy's match against Jeff Hardy. Yeah. As noted yesterday, Jeff was apparently knocked out uh -huh. and had his nose broken Jeez. after Sammy hit a shooting star press on him. It's believed Sammy's knee may have struck Jeff's face, uh. resulting in the injury. It's difficult to tell if this is a work or legitimate as both Jeff and Matt seem to be turning heel. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. And I mean, I don't, I don't know. I saw the clip look pretty brutal. It, obviously, it wasn't on purpose. It's part of the wrestling that we, you know, you know that you you sign up for. So I, I doubt it was a uh, an intentional injury. But you know, wishing Jeff speedy recovery as well. You know. Finally, a former WWE announcer, Kevin Patrick, lands a lucrative new job. And last but not least, Kevin Egan, aka former WWE announcer Kevin Patrick, has landed on his feet following his release from WWE. Major League Soccer recently announced that okay. Egan will be joining its English studio show, MLS 360. MLS 360 in English will be led by new host Kevin Egan, who previously served as game play-by-play -play announcer. Congrats to Kevin on his latest success. But there you have it. No, folks. that's awesome, the wildest man. News That's awesome. I'm, I'm happy for him. He's able to find him something. He was able to find him something relatively quick. One thing, you know, being on that announcement team, you know, even though for us fans, it was kind of a hard listen to, you know, just listen to him do the calls and play by play. But obviously some other company saw that and thought it would be, he would be useful. So, you know, it, it got him some more exposure and he was able to find something relatively quick. So I'm happy for him, wishing him nothing but best, uh, you know, best in his future, you know, future success in the, in the company he's with now. So comment down below. Let me know what was the most interesting story, news story 
uh, that you heard in this particular video, man. Looking forward to Friday Night Smackdown tonight. So make sure you guys join us live on the Smackdown live stream reactions. We have every single Friday. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K, and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.